I'm Troy Kirby with my Edmonds News with a quick look at the 2021 Washington State Legislative Session. The House debated in Gross Substitute House Bill 1050, which focuses on reducing greenhouse gas emissions. The bill passed the House 5640, moving on to the Senate for consideration. Hydrofluorocarbons are a gas that is uh, used in a variety of uh, commercial and industrial applications, primarily as a refrigerant. They're also used as a propellant and a foam blowing agent. Um, there are safer alternatives to these chemicals that are available for use in those applications. That's on our next step along the transition towards safer alternatives that do not uh, contribute to uh, to radiative forcing effects in our atmosphere that cause our earth to heat up. I learned something new this year after the COVID shut down the stay home, stay healthy order. In a few short weeks after that order was initiated and all restaurants globally, not just across our nation, but globally were shut down as a result of the pandemic, over a billion pounds of processing potatoes piled up at the farm gate. One wouldn't realize how much food is processed for global export in the state of Washington. We are a major supplier of food products and in particular frozen potato and french fry products for global restaurants. Most potatoes are actually consumed in restaurants. So Madam Speaker, that led to a great odyssey where I got to understand how integrated our food system is. You realize that all of our food has to be kept refrigerated and in my district, we have enormous processing and storage facilities, as well as distribution centers that prepare our, those frozen um, packaged foods to transport across the world. Um, like the good lady from the ninth, I have uh, food processing facilities in my district and they would be negatively affected by this, uh, this step. Um, I also have a, uh, construction industry in my district that would be negatively affected by this step. Madam Speaker, this bill, well, some supporters say is a small bill, but it's a small bill in the wrong direction. Uh, hydrofluorocarbons is not something that most of us um, came to this job excited to work on, but it is significant uh, portion of the problem and it's, um, a meaningful opportunity uh, for us to make a difference in the climate crisis. In, in committee, uh, we heard many of the concerns uh, that have been raised here today. Madam Speaker, you may know that I'm excited about the opportunity that highly efficient uh, heat pumps uh, present to reduce energy use um, and um, clean up that sector of our economy. Um, I actually worked for Green County PUD for many years, and one of my responsibilities was to report SF6 gas, which is the fluorocarbon gas that we use in our circuit breakers in all our utilities. And what that meant, and this is just reporting, what that meant was 80 hours of work by utility personnel to feed me the information, uh, to report to, uh, uh, to WEC, to report to the Washington State Ecology Department. We put reports together for each of those uh, SF6 uh, units on the circuit breakers that we have at the Warrenpum Switchyard and the Warrenpum units across uh, our dams. You know, Speaker Orwell, um, when I moved here some just over 20 years ago, I, I, I didn't know how incredible the agriculture industry was in Washington State. You know, coming from the Southwest, you hear about our great apples and great potatoes, but but I learned that, that Washington grows more, has a more diverse crop yield than any other state in the country. And we know that the reason that we grow these great crops is because of our climate. And if we are not addressing climate change, that type of biodiversity is going to drastically change um, the ability of these of these farmers to produce these great crops. The House debated substitute House Bill 1221, standardizing homeless definitions. The bill passed the House 5136, moving on to the Senate for consideration. 
But when I when we're in Olympia, I actually I live in a fifth wheel trailer. I bring it over there and set it up, and I live in a trailer park. And I'm always amazed at my neighbors because every year my neighbors are the same people. They live there year round for the most part. I think there's three spots there in a row to where some of us in the legislature, three of us actually uh, move in and live there. But all the rest of the neighbors are pretty much uh, there year round. And uh, and I've talked to a lot of them. And why they, why do you live in, in, a, in a trailer park and in a fifth wheel? Or some of those fifth wheels are pretty nice. They're much nicer than what I live in, is for sure. But they, they talk about, you know, it's affordable housing and, and we can we can afford this housing and, and it gives us a, enough of a disposable income to do other things that we want to do in our life or they don't want the responsibility of a yard and, and all the other things that go along with a house and those kind of things and uh, they're just they just feel good about living there and it's uh you know i feel good about living there too because i trust all my neighbors and i know that my uh my home away from home will be safe and occasionally when we leave for the weekends and those kind of things i i know that it's all good and uh, i feel good about that and i struggle with defining that as homelessness i just do this bill is about children about little children the reality for some of these children includes sleeping in a camping trailer on cold nights or hot nights and it means for many many moves whenever a bedroom or a couch is available to use for a while. Sometimes it means gathering blankets to make a bed on the floor of a friend's house. These are little, little children. This isn't about a lifestyle choice. I understand that some people choose to live out of an RV or a trailer and they experience life that way, but this bill isn't about them. The House debated in Gross House Bill 1090 which bans the government use of private prisons or detention facilities. The bill passed the House 7621, moving on to the Senate for consideration. This bill is about the conflict of interest that exists between an organization that is beholden to its stakeholders that demand a profit and, to, and, and those that in, in society, many would say, are labeled, especially in regards to their rights, as the least of these. Again, of course, none of us condone any sort of abuse and you know, our thoughts, prayers, everything we can do. We need to get to the bottom of this. And I think everyone agrees with that and make sure that all people who are here in America are treated humanely. So uh, the reasons people would vote yes is because that, you know, we feel like this needs to be looked into further. Also, because you know, some believe that prisons um, and these types of facilities need to be run by the government, not necessarily private entities. It's, there's no clear-cut great answer. I, I'm going to probably lean towards supporting this bill, uh, but not for any of the reasons I've heard thus far. Uh, thus far, we've heard how poorly private detention centers are run. Uh, we've heard examples of medical uh, malfeasance, uh, hunger strikes, you know, food being poor. Th there's nothing I haven't heard today that describes negatively the private industry that I don't see in, in the public facilities. I'm in the 39th district, Madam Speaker. Uh, we, have, we have our correctional facility out here. And, and I'll tell you the, the, the reports that I got of, of the horrific deaths because of lack of medical attention by some of these inmates at a government facility. Uh, they're not feeding them breakfast at my facility, Madam Speaker. That's a government facility. This legislation is really about protecting the health and well being of people that are very vulnerable. I'm very familiar, too familiar, with this facility since it is near my home. It has had a long history of hunger strikes, suicide attempts, and actual suicides. In this facility are many people who came to this country with hopes and dreams of seeking refuge and asylum. Imagine if this is what you find when you, you get here, is to be tamed in a facility such as this. Well, the, the stories are, are, are heartbreaking and the challenges at some of these facilities, both private and government, are many. I would hope that um, 
a contracting officer's technical representative from the federal government would intervene and try to fix some of these challenges. And if indeed, uh, as described, horrible instances that occur. Uh, with that said, my, my biggest concern is we're getting into the middle of litigation. The federal preemption issue is real. Um, rarely do states get to tell the federal government anything. Thank you for watching the Daily Legislative Report by My Edmonds News, covering the 2021 legislative session.